Hey Maker, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Christina Nicole, and I am a product photography coach teaching makers like you how to take your own high quality product photos that actually attract more customers and make more sales for your product-based business. In this video, I'm going to take you inside of Photoshop Elements and show you how to get that pure white background for your product photos using the Quick Selection tool. Now, before we jump into this training, I want to mention that there are a lot of different ways that you can create studio shots of your products on a pure white background. The method you will see me use in this video, it is just one way. If you don't own or use Photoshop elements to edit your product photos, then this video probably isn't for you. If you're using a different software to edit your product photos, let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to create a similar training like this on the software that you are currently using. If you aren't already familiar with Photoshop Elements, it's basically a partial version of Photoshop. The benefit to this is it allows you to actually purchase the software for a one-time fee versus paying monthly or yearly for the actual full, full version of Photoshop. So Photoshop Elements can be purchased on Amazon. As I'm recording this video, it's about $100 for the software. And typically I have to upgrade that software about every two to three years. It starts to kind of get a little wonky and I have to upgrade it. So this is just a cheaper version. Photoshop Elements is a little easier to use. It isn't as um, intimidating to get into and actually work with in the tools. So let's check it out. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is you're going to make sure that you're in expert mode. This is what the inside of Photoshop Elements 2023 looks like. You're going to make sure you're in expert mode. And then we want to make sure that the right hand corner here, we have layers turned on. Step one is going to be to duplicate your background layer. Things are popping up on other screens for me. It's going to look like you can name it whatever. Or you can just keep it background copy. Hit OK. And we're going to turn that off. The reason we duplicate a layer is so that we make sure that we have an original copy. We don't want to do any edits or changes to our original copy. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is actually enhance the image. So this product and this photo was actually taken by a student of mine. Her name is Cindy. And these are her little guys. And she has expressed to me that the color of this product is a little more golden. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to go to enhance, adjust lighting, brightness, and contrast. Okay. And then we are going to increase the brightness on this. We get our exposure a little better and make him look a little more golden than he did brown. Okay. We're going to go about there. Now, we already have a pretty nice white background here. It's not pure white, but it's, you know, it's a nice, nice white background with minimal shadowing underneath the product and all of that. But to get that pure white background, to get consistency in your backgrounds, the easiest way to do that is to actually put it on pure white, which Amazon is now requiring this for your first thumbnail image. So the next step that we're going to take is we're going to go over here to the quick selection tool. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can actually select this product, remove it. You can use the lasso, quick selection tool. We could do some other things to the background to try to get that pure white look. This is one way. Keep that in mind. So this training is specifically on the quick selection tool and using that to take your product and put it on a pure white background. So when we do that, anytime we're trying to do background removal or selection, you want to make sure that the background that you're using, there's some contrast there. Contrast is going to help the selection tool get a better selection. What that means is that the dog is brown and the background drops white, right? So that's a nice contrast, difference in color. Now, the bone, on the other hand, we may end up having some issues around these edges because the bone's pretty similar in color to the backdrop. So that's going to end up being some issues. Okay, so let's go ahead and see 
what it gives us here. We may have some issues around the edge of the ears and stuff because this is a reflective product. So we are getting, you know, some hot spots and things. Don't make sure you don't forget the little eyes. Grab the bone kind of nicely. We're going to have probably some issues over there. Now, the reason we're having an issue in that spot, particularly right here, is because the dog is actually pretty blurry there. So it's having a hard time picking up those specific pixels. You'll also notice, so here's where we're having some issues. And then you'll notice down here in the shadowing as well, because the shadow is pretty similar in color to the actual product. So we're going to have some issues there, which is fine. I'm going to show you how we are going to work through these. So go back to the selection tool and we're actually going to go to the bottom left here and we're going to hit subtract. And we're going to see if we can get in here and maybe get a better, better option. Okay. So that's pretty good. Same here. We'll go in and that one's not working well for us. That's a little better. Okay, we'll go back and hit add and see if we can kind of snag that back a little bit. That's better. Okay, we're still going to make some additional adjustments though. So let's go ahead and grab the zoom. We'll zoom back out so we can see the full product. Go back to the quick selection tool. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to hit refine edge. Now this is an option. Once you pull this up, you can kind of see when you have overlay on it shows the background pink which is super cool because it kind of shows us where we've removed the background essentially okay so we can see there's portions here that no longer or don't match up to the product around the ears and such you can use the brush tool here and you can come in and you can kind of brush over where you want it to match up and sometimes it does an okay job you also have an eraser here. So if it got on the dog a little bit, go in and try to erase that. But this isn't my favorite option. I find that this option tends to kind of create like a wider spread and it's a little transparent, meaning you can still see some of the background in it. So typically I hit refine edge and come in just to output it. So we're going to output it to a new layer with layer mask, but that's something that you can kind of play with there if you want. Okay. So now we have our new layer up here with our product cut out. The next step is to actually put it on a white background so we can actually see our edges better. So we're gonna go here to the left and hit create new layer. And then we're gonna go up top, the top menu and hit new fill layer, solid color. And this is gonna pop up here and you can name it anything you want. And then when it comes to it being pure white, your hex color code is going to be FFF, FFF, it's six Fs, okay? So now what you'll see here, though, is we just have a white canvas. Well, that's because it's above this one. So now we need to take this and drag it below. Because if you've ever worked with, with layers, they essentially stack on each other, right? So you have to make sure the layers are in proper order so that you can see everything. And now we can see some of our, our underlining issues that we have here. So what we're going to go back and do is go into this layer up top here where we did the cutout. So we're going to select this and select the actual cutout. And we're going to go back in and kind of refine the edges on our own. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to zoom in and we're going to use the paint option and kind of clean up these edges. So when you select the paintbrush and it toggles back and forth between black and white, black is an eraser. And if you click white, that's going to actually put the background back. So I tend to stay with my thing unless I have to get in the corner. About 27 is where I like to keep my brush size. And so if you notice, when we go in here, it's putting the background back on, right? And you can see some of, we got a little bit of the dog left. And then we go here, we swap it, and now we come in and we can erase and create a better line than the actual selection tool did. Now, you may not have to clean up the line everywhere. I kind of like to come in and clean the line up solely to see how this just looks a little blurrier and not as choppy. 
Okay, this side is really choppy, so we're going to want to clean that side up. Certain portions, like the bones, not too bad. Um, but the ear is a little choppy up here. This side of the ear isn't too bad as far as choppiness. We got a little bit of the background exposed there. So we're just going to go through and we're going to clean all this up. We're going to swap these and go back to our paintbrush. And we're just going to come through and do our line. I'm just going to go ahead and this is easy to kind of do when you're zoomed out. Just clean those edges up a little. Okay. And then I'm going to zoom back in and we're going to touch these up a little closer. So swap our colors again. Now we're going to remove, we're going to do the brush and we're just going to come in and same thing, just kind of go around the edge. Make sure we don't have any of that background remaining, even out here. Sometimes our eyes can play some tricks on us. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and get all of this removed. Now, when we get into these little corners here, we're just gonna reduce our brush size. Now, you'll notice though, when we start to reduce our brush size, we get a harder line. Less, see how the line's harder? I like a little bit more of the blur. So I'm going to put my brush back up to like a 27. And then I'm going to come in here and kind of fix that and get hard in that corner. Now, if you goof up and you get on the product again, of course, you just swap the colors, swap it back to white, and you can bring that back in. And sometimes if you can't tell where the line is, it helps to put a lot of the background back on. So sometimes, again, like I said, it can kind of play tricks on us. Okay, so now we're going to zoom back out. And there's our little doggy, but now he kind of just looks like he's floating on the pure white. So we're going to add a drop shadow in. So with the same layer and mask selected, we are going to hit styles and we're going to right click on drop shadow. I tend to use this one here, apply it to the document. <clears throat> And then we're going to hit settings and go in and make some alterations to it. I tend to do the angle at about 150. It kind of makes it look like the light is coming from the top left. And then we're going to increase the size to give us a little bit of a larger, blurrier looking shadow. And then the distance is good. We'll put that about a 30. And then we're going to fade that shadow a little bit. About a 22 is where I like to put it. So it just adds this nice little soft shadow to the right of the product, making it look a little more dimensional and not floating on the page. Now, if you need to make any actual edits to the product after the fact, you can do that. Like I'm noticing a few spots that we may clean up. So I'm going to click layers again, and this time I make sure I have that layer selected, but the actual dog. And we're going to go and zoom in again. 
Now, some of these black spots I'm going to get because she did mention that they don't show as because these these little guys are like two inches. They're tiny. So they don't really show on the product, but they show in the image. So to do that, I'm going to go to the clone stamp tool here. And on a Mac, I'm a Mac user. So on Mac, it's option. And then you click your mouse to select the area. And then you essentially just cover it up. Now, the big thing with these is obviously you want to make sure that your area is matching in color. So when you do a selection, you just want to make sure like that does not match. Probably want to grab right here and then pull down and kind of grab there. Got a little string or something up here. So let's go ahead and select that area. Make sure the colors match. Clean some of this up. It basically just pulls and clones what we have seen. I'm gonna grab this here up that spot a little bit so they aren't just jumping out at us okay, let's take a look here all right and i think our guy is good to go we're going to go in and crop to fill the frame a little bit more and here is our final image check out the before and after. And please take the time to like this video if you found it useful. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about taking your own quality product photos. See you next time.